afternoon. Wait. Oh, go ahead. Go. Good afternoon, day two. Uh, today was the first real day of treatment. Um, labs came back not as good as we wanted with the bilirubin, but just a little bump in the road with God's grace. Still grateful to God for bringing us out here and grateful to my wife and best friend. Uh, talk to you tomorrow. I think my cousin is a normal person, to be straight up with you. I mean, two kids, one on the way, full-time job, and he does all these crazy activities. Done the marathon, Ironman, and he still manages to find time for his family. AJ just went for it all the time. Um, there wasn't anything that really held him back. Um, even if there was something going on in his life that, that might derail him, AJ just kept going. Tonight, ABC 7's Alan Wong breaks the silence on an epidemic many Asians are reluctant to talk about. Doctors say cultural barriers are aiding the spread of this silent epidemic. The Asian Liver Center at Stanford University estimates that one in 10 Asian Americans is chronically infected with hepatitis B. One third will develop liver cancer or cirrhosis. That's because they usually have no symptoms until it's too late. And I happen to be that one in 10 of Asian mm -hmm. people infected with hepatitis B. I was infected at birth, but since I was screened, I right. was able to do something about it. I take mm -hmm. a pill. I went from 13 million copies of the virus attacking my liver to wow. zero. I'm undetectable. Good for you. Yeah. And of course, you're wearing the lapel pin Thank in you. honor of... I'm Alan Wong, I'm 49 years old. I'm a journalist, married, have three kids. Hi, sleepyhead, it's time to go. 13 year old son, 11 year old son, and a four year old daughter. We live here in the Berkeley Hills, in the Bay Area. My number one priority is being a good dad and husband. Alan just loves being home with his family. He wants to share every moment with his kids. Jameson is my oldest son. He's 13 years old. Never mind, Mom. Doing under the table. What are you... Everything I do now is embarrassing to him. Everything I say is incorrect. Ryan, stop. You don't know the code. All right, should Ryan. I go in? His nickname is Rhino. He's mischievous. He's conniving. He's got the fire inside of him. He's a passionate kid. Ryan. Come on, Carly. So Carly is our daughter that we adopted. She walks into a room has complete command of it. I don't want for too much. How are you doing? Fine. OK. You got your music bag, Jamo? Yeah. There's only a few things that you got, and that's your health, your family, and, and a love around you. I've learned to really just appreciate that.
Today's going to be a, a rough one, but God puts us on the path for a reason. I have my best friend here still slaving away, helping me out. Um, still can't beat the view. Food is I'm starting to get used to it, but uh, still tough because Melissa had tacos today. But I fought that off. AJ was a total goofball ever since he was a little kid. That was his way of getting the attention. He would always follow me around. He always wanted to do what I want to do. He even let me put makeup on him. He was the baby of the family. I love all my siblings equally, but AJ, he was always the one I could never say no to. I always felt the need to protect him. When my brother was three, or four, he had an episode of jaundice, and they took him to the hospital, and they decided to do a biopsy on his liver, and they discovered that he had hepatitis B. They tested our entire family and found that my mother had it, I had it, and my father had it. They were able to deduce that it was from my father and his family. My dad definitely liked to downplay things a lot. Maybe even two years before, he had mentioned that the doctors found some cirrhosis in his liver, and he just kind of left it at that. And then a year later, he mentioned that they found a little bit of a mass, um, and he just left it at that. He didn't really give me anything to worry about. We weren't really thinking about the hepatitis B at the time because we didn't know how serious that virus was. My brother and I went with him to one doctor's appointment, and that's when they broke it down for us that he has liver cancer, the doctor said he has five years if he's lucky. My brother definitely didn't handle it very well. He didn't come to any of the appointments. He definitely was hiding from it. He couldn't stand to see our dad vulnerable. Yeah. It was about a year from when he was diagnosed to when we lost him. It was the mid-90s, and I had a hep B viral attack, and my liver was inflamed. I didn't know what was going on. I was jaundiced. I went to the doctor. I couldn't eat. My liver just was not functioning. And so I went to the doctor, and you know they ran some tests on me. He came back, and uh, he told me, your hepatitis B positive. Your liver's inflamed. Uh, but at the time, you know, that was about all he knew. He pretty much said, okay, you know, you're just gonna have to shake it off. There is no cure to this. So liver is a triangular organ that's here, mm -hmm. and your liver edge is smooth. If it becomes a mm -hmm. square, then that means that there's scar tissue developing. Mm -hmm. You have a smooth, soft liver edge, and it's in a triangular shape. This is a sign of liver health. That's good. We like it. Sit up and let's walk across and do a little bit more homework. Me and my brothers and sisters contracted this through birth. As you're coming through the birth canal, um, they believe that's how we were infected by hepatitis B. Growing up, we really didn't know that we had it. The one thing I always ask is my mom. I wonder how she got that. And my mom was like, she goes, well, I never even checked that I had hepatitis B. She goes, I really don't know, you know. The first time we found out is uh, UT Austin have the blood donation. And my kids, of course, they want to donate, you know, charity donate. Then they find out, hey, they don't want my blood. You don't realize it's hepatitis. You just think you're ill and you just recover from an illness. But then once you start talking with your brothers and sisters, they go, oh, yeah, the same thing with me. And then you realize, OK, maybe there's some kind of pattern. My Uncle Peter. You know, he was always jaundiced. And my Uncle Peter died in his, you know, mid to late 50s from liver cancer. My Uncle Luther died from liver cancer. And uh, in the past five years, my Uncle Henry died from liver complications. 
I tried to be a hero last night and not take as much pain pills. So I'm praying the price today, the whole day. Been super exhausted, but uh, hopefully tomorrow's gonna be a good day. A little bumps in the road, just like uh, just like always, but we'll get through it. So the first time I met AJ, I thought he was a douche. And I was like, he's so annoying. Whenever we'd go out to the clubs or something, he would always be like the one on the dance floor, being goofy. He just always was the life of the party. And then eventually his personality came out and I grew to love him and that was where it all happened, I guess. Once Izzy came, it was like a gift you never knew you wanted, you know? The look on his face when he came out saying that she was born, it was, uh, it was the best. You knew something changed. The light switch had flipped, and it was his family now. She was just the apple of AJ's eye. They were best friends, I hate to admit it, but she was the daddy's girl. AJ was an amazing dad. There wasn't ever a time that I didn't enjoy watching him around Izzy or Levi. Just looking at his kids with so much pride. He embodies so much of what I want to become, what I want to be when I become a father. Just the way he took care of his family, no matter how hard he got. Never heard him complain. Never heard him complain. Alan and I met when I was working on Capitol Hill for a member of Congress, and he was starting on his career as a journalist. Jill and I had been dating for a few months, and she got really sick, and she didn't know what was going on. Uh, and she became very jaundiced, and her appetite went down. She couldn't eat. And when the doctor told me that I had hepatitis B, I was um, didn't even know what that was. By my own ignorance and stupidity, you know, she was infected by me. That was the time when the doctors that I was seeing had very inconsistent information they were giving me. I was not taking it serious. That's when I think we first kind of started this discussion. Like, you need to figure this out. <laughs> Who put, that ribbon looks beautiful. According to what doctors have told me, it's completely gone. I'm not a chronically infected person. I'm not going to be. Are you ready? OK, let's say thank you to your teachers. Come on. Now for newborns, they're inoculated for it as soon as they're born. My sons, we were very adamant about that. We wanted to know everything, how it was going to happen. They didn't do that for kids you know, 10 years prior to. Now it is standard. All right, come on, Rhino. Let's go. My kids have just heard it being talked about for all these years. They just understand that their dad takes this pill and goes and gets ultrasounds. But, um, you know, they're more concerned about whatever they have going on. OK, are we ready? Wow. Yeah. Let's go. Mama. What? I thought Rhino didn't have his seatbelt on. Rhino better have his seatbelt on. He doesn't. Tell him what happens when you don't have your seatbelt on. Who comes to get you? You, Mama. The police officer, <laughs> remember? Yeah. Do you ever have anybody pass out on here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially right after lunch. <laughs> so you can see um, from this area up, is uh, that's your liver, basically. 
Go ahead and take a big deep breath and hold it in for me. And just hold that right there. Okay, so you're good to go. All right, that was easy. Thank you, sir. Of course. Um, so we will uh, we'll send the results on to your doctor. Any questions at all? Nope. Okay. Thanks for coming. I guess color's looking good. Um, energy, so-so from all the different treatments. But um, I don't have this fog anymore when I'm thinking or anything like that. And supposedly I'm filling up in my face, which is good. Hopefully I'll be on my feet by the time we leave this place or at least walk out of this place. All right, so I'll see you guys tomorrow. So, you know, Dad's health was completely different. I mean, he was overweight, he was a huge heavy smoker, he ate whatever he wanted, he was completely stressed out, he stopped mm -hmm. exercising, you know? And so, you know, and me and AJ probably thought the same thing, like, hey, like, that's not us. That's AJ's, like, this is not me. When I first had the conversation with AJ about checking on his liver and his hep B, that was when he was like in the middle of like the partying. And of course, still coping with the loss of our dad. So he didn't want to have to hear that. It wasn't until after him and his wife, Melissa, had Izzy that he started to pay more attention to his health. Having a kid and not being able to go out and party anymore, his new addiction was going to be this cycling. When AJ first started in triathlons, he was a total rookie. You know, he showed up with his bike that he had just bought, and I've never met anyone with more determination. He was very driven. You know, he wanted the best, and he always just wanted to be on top of everything. And naturally, that came so easy. I remember saying, when did AJ get so fast? How did, how did that happen? Man, right in the start, some chick like elbowed my face and took like a gulp of water. He was a guy who was just very charismatic, very aggressive and powerful athlete. He had this idea to start Team Cancer Sucks. When he asked me about it, I was just thought it was cool. It was like, absolutely. He was just an inspiration to a lot of people. You know, he was a coach, a mentor. He was a leader. He was all of these things. I mean, he was in, you know, the most fit he's ever been in his life. He just finished an Ironman a couple months before. It was peak fitness. He was asking me if I'd go on an easy ride with him. On our normal rides, he'd be pulling me. I'll always be behind him and kind of drafting um, and using his strength and his speed because uh, he's just a much stronger, more, much more competitive cyclist. But on this ride, I was in front, and um, I noticed that he was in agony. He would ask to stop um, every now and then. So finally, I told him, you know, let's, let's forget about it. Let's call a cab, or you can call your wife to pick us up. Typically, I would get phone calls from them, like, uh, I got a flat tire, can you pick me up? But even through this one, he didn't have me pick him up. So when he got home, he was like, I can't really breathe. I'm having a hard time breathing. And so we went to the ER, and he was having a hard time just even sitting down on the gurney. So they had to do a CT. My brother is a radiology tech, and so he's pretty familiar with images. And he saw this big mass. And, you know, his first reaction was, you know, what the fuck is that? The doctors came in and said that there's a huge tumor in your left lobe. I think at the time, I didn't want to face it, especially with what the doctors are saying. I think it was just a number that we didn't want to see. So we just um, decided to fight really hard, so. I think up until that point, like I was just like in utter disbelief. You know, I was like, there's just no way. 
Like, n like no way, you know? Like, not twice. Like, the universe wouldn't do that. How come I didn't see you? Yeah. Hello? Wait until she... Um, where are you trying to call us? So, we're going to St. Luke's Hospital. We're gonna take an MRI because my routine ultrasound uh, for the first time came back with uh, something that alerted the doctors. They found some nodules on my liver. Uh, we don't know if they're benign or man malignant nodules, but I don't even know how many, they didn't tell me. But in order to get a better look, they wanna take an MRI and uh, see exactly what these are. Up until recently, my tests have always come back clean. It's always been real positive, going in for my ultrasound, come back clean. So, you know, when they said you had these nodules on your liver, that was a real reality check. That's never happened before. You know, I looked it up and Googled everything, tried to find as much as I could. Um, but heck, you know, you don't know what it is. So that's what's so scary about it. You really start thinking about your mortality. You have these great dreams and you wanna see your grandkids and everything and now you're wondering if you're ever gonna make that. You know, you think about it, you know, what's crazy is what, what's really become evident to me is that you know, that statistic that they say that one in 10 will die, you know, uh, becomes more and more real that I am that one that that's supposed to die because, you know, if you look at my past, I, I've never been able to suppress this virus. And so now I'm at that stage where you just absorb every second of it. Suck it all in, suck it all in, enjoy it, enjoy it, enjoy it. Watch Carly spin and twirl and dance in the living room. They're just, you know, so innocent. You can kind of feel that, you know, when you were a kid.
and then you, you don't want any of the tan. Aside from everything else, Melissa and I have been having good talks. Um, you know, just bringing my pride levels down and learning to just let go. Um, trust in the Lord. And, you know, he'll, he's our driver, so we're all in the passenger seats just going along with it. Other than that, we're about to go to sleep and see you in the morning, I guess. God bless you. It's definitely a, a tough little transition. Um, I still feel like he's just on vacation or something. I try to keep a lot of his stuff alive to remind them. I talk to Levi every day about AJ just so he doesn't, you know, he's so young. I just want him to always remember. Because I think, oh man, this one's not even gonna know how great of a dad. It's a, it's a bumpy road, but uh, thank goodness the kids, the kids, um, they definitely help me out. I would just love to continue his legacy and teach the kids you know, life to the fullest and go hard, you know, don't talk about it, be about it. Okay, ready? Yeah, Set. Ready? Get it. Go. 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 Hello, it's Alan. Yeah, hi, Alan. It's Tim Davern. Um, how are you? Doing well. How are you doing, Dr. Davern? Good. Um, is this a good time to chat for a minute? Let's talk. I did go over the scan with Dr. Kagey, and it was all good news. I honestly think that the report from and the ultrasound that you had locally uh, was maybe an overcall based on the fact that they uh, were using more sensitive equipment than they had been in the past. That being said, the MRI is very sensitive and very specific, and there was absolutely nothing of concern on the, the study from this morning. Wow. That's amazing. That's great so, news. So, so all really good news. Well, I, I can't tell you how much I thank you for calling me this quickly because you know how people sit around and think about this stuff. Yeah, I didn't want it to prey on your mind, and, uh, um, you know, so I'm glad that everything was, was really, uh, um, perfect there. Thank you, Tim. Take care. Right. Have a great day, okay? Bye-bye. Bye.
Let's go, Rhino. I'm lucky. He's a great husband and a great father. And I'm lucky he's here and he's healthy and he's made this transformation. All right, spot it up. Now get a hold of it. Jill began to encourage me to be part of the Happy Free campaign. She said, Alan, you need a cause. You're on the air all over the Bay Area. And this is the place, this is ground zero for it here in the United States. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Sean Lopez, and I am living with hepatitis B. I had the chance to be part of this huge lobbying team. <laughs> it was a whirlwind, you know? Um, it was a good distraction, too, after losing AJ. We lost my brother at 30 this past March. So I'm here today to tell his story and to honor him and to make it known that hepatitis B is a big thing. When you turn 80, you deserve to have a birthday party for yourself, don't you think? So, Mom, I, you know, I'm so happy we're doing this for you. You deserve it. If you look back at my family, my uncles who died, this cycle of the infection stretches back as far as the 30s that we can trace back. I feel fortunate that we've been able to end that cycle of this infection in my family line. So many people could do that. They could end it. And all they got to do is arm themselves with knowledge and take care of themselves. You know, I try to keep it real simple. Just enjoy the real basic things in life. All I care about is that I'm, you know, surrounded by my kids and my wife, and we're having great experiences, and we're sharing, you know, a lot of love and that stuff, you know. You can't buy that.